everybody. This is the relationship workshop, and I'm your leader of this workshop. And just because I'm a leader doesn't mean I'm not working on it myself. I basically decide that there's two things in my life that I'm working on right now. And number one is bringing more money. And number two is bringing in my soulmate. And so I decided to make workshops because the more people work on it together, the more powerful the work is for everybody involved. The point of the workshop is basically so that you can all bring in your relationship problems. And if they're things that are personal, we can turn off the video for that point. We don't have to be videoing it for the whole world to see. We'll only at the end see the results so that people can actually see that this thing is giving people results. So um, just to let you know in advance, you don't have to feel uncomfortable that the whole world is going to see all your relationship problems. Real point of it is that we can all work together to get to where we want to get to. And as I said, the more people work on it together, the more powerful the work is. So I have a number of books on relationships, on how to build relationships, and how to draw relationships in on a more, um, not on a physical level of going out and saying hi to a person and bringing them in, but more about how to do the inner work in order to bring your relationship in. And what we'll do is we'll work with the books. The first one I'm going to use is Calling in the One, although I might mix in from other places as well, things that I know, things that I've read about. And what I do advise is that you all have a notebook. Get a notebook that you like writing in because you'll be more likely to write in with it. Get a notebook, with, get a pen which you like writing with because if you like your writing utensil, the chances of you actually using it are going to be much greater. For this specific course, since we'll also probably make what's called a vision board, and you'll hear, if you don't know what it is yet, you'll hear about it in the future. You also need old magazines, which you don't have to get right this very moment, but at some point we will be using them too. Cut out pictures. You'll probably need some sort of glue. The stick glue works fine. Um, if you're going to get, when you get the notebook, I would advise you to get <coughs> some of the stuff we're going to do also has to do with handwriting. And when you're working with handwriting in general, I prefer using online so that you're not writing textbooks straight, but we end up getting a upward slant. Upward slant is more optimistic. We'll get into that as well. Don't be overwhelmed right now if I'm giving you a whole bunch of stuff. We will go into each thing separately at the right time. I'm just giving you some sort of an overview over here so you can know what to prepare yourself for. Okay, so before we start, looking for our soulmate, we have to make sure that we ourselves are open to bringing in our soulmate. Because if we're closed, then the soulmate's not going to come. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I know that for myself, I was divorced 11 years ago. And when I first got divorced, I had no intention whatsoever of meeting someone. I had to figure out my life. I had six small children at the time that I was raising basically on my own. And it kind of showed because guys didn't pop into my life. Right To a certain extent, I was closed. My whole mindset was closed and my heart was closed. Now, as I became more and more ready to meet the right one, to think about, not meet the right one, even just thinking about being the right one, things opened up. People can feel it even if they can't see it, even if you don't actually say it out loud. People from the outside can feel that openness. But we want to make sure that we're totally open and to the right people. So the first exercise that we're going to do is going to have to do with opening ourselves up. Now, before we actually get into the exercise, just a little bit that I learned when I was learning handwriting analysis, and that is that our whys have a very big impact on how open we are. Let me just find the card over here about the why. Not the jealousy. If not, I will just show it to you. All right, and I think it's going to be easier if I just show it to you. Over here. Okay. This is what I found myself doing, and I'll show you in just one moment. Okay, there's three basic letters that have the lower zone, these little lower loops right over here. Now, when those loops are closed, it means that you are not open to trusting. You're not open to an intimate relationship. Okay? When the loops are open, you are much more open to a 
relationship, much more open to trusting and to allowing its trust and allowing intimacy. Okay, so when I first started this whole business, my loops were like this. And I said to myself, oh my goodness, how am I gonna ever allow something in with that kind of loop of lacking intimacy and lacking the trust to allow the intimacy in? Now, one more little tip over here is, here is the baseline. If your loop does not end on top of the best baseline, but rather ends down here like this, it means that you're never gonna be successful. Look at it as sort of like a motor car, which as you're going on a motor race, you're going, you almost get to the top and then whoop, you miss it and then you fail, okay? So the two things we're looking for over here is number one, success. Number two is having, how do you say, the open loop, which is open to intimacy. Now, interestingly enough, these loops also mean imagination. And since the imagination is on the lower part, it's physical imagination, which could have to do with things, let's say, like traveling, could have to do with things like exercise, could also have to do with things like sex. So if you want to improve your sex life, you might want to make these loops large and big like that, because that sort of will increase your sex drive in general. And not just the sex drive, but also the whole curiosity about sex, the ability to experiment more on sex, which would probably spice up your sex life if you're having a very dull one right now. That's a little side bit over there, a little good bit. But for me, the main thing that I'm trying to do right now is just to open up my loops enough to be able to allow in the intimacy and to allow in the love. So what I do is every night, I practice a whole page of these. And whenever I write, I do these things called either morning pages, which is where you take every morning, you write three pages and you just write whatever comes out. Now, granted, I don't do it in the morning because I don't manage in the morning. I do it in the evening before I go to sleep. But in my opinion, it's the same thing because in the evening before I go to sleep, I'm just as tired and just as groggy as in the morning when I just wake up. So it probably is the same thing. And since I'd rather be doing it period rather than not doing it all, I do it in the evening before I go to sleep. So I take three pages of notebook, write in every day, and I write in script, and I use that time to also practice whatever thing I'm trying to change at the time. Those of you who are in the money workshop that I'm doing know that there's other things that you should be doing in order to do money, although this is one of the, the traits, the success trait that you also wanna have for bringing in money into your life. So in this case, it's for the relationship. In the money case, you don't necessarily need to have the big loop, but bringing that little tidbit over here, that little chook chick up on top of the line will also bring you success in terms of everything in your life. Okay, so that's the first little tidbit over here. Second thing is opening yourself up to receiving love. Okay, now I'm not gonna go into the whole book itself that each chapter in this book has a section which, you know, she talks about get how she got to this practice and then she gives a practice. Um, sometimes maybe I will bring the part that she brings about the practice. This time I'm not going to. I had a difficult la night last night, um, had to go to a funeral, so I didn't have that much chance to prepare, but we will go into the practice because that's the important part of it here. Okay. So if you're able to, and you have to do this right now, this is just the instructions to do it, okay? Sit cross-legged on either the pillow or pillow to do this exercise. If you're unable to cross your leg in this way, simply sit up with a straight back and legs stretched out, feet together on the floor in front of you, or try placing a pillow under you while sitting up on your knees. Now you begin, I'll let you do that first. by stretching your arms out in front of you, palms together, elbows straight, with your arms parallel to the floor. And as you inhale through your nose, open your arms widely to the sides, expansively, bringing your shoulder blades as close as possible together. As you stretch, place your awareness on your heart, 
Imagine your heart opening and expanding as you fill your lungs with air by continuing to breathe in deeply. Feel your arms stretch out as though they were giant wings while keeping your arms parallel to the ground. When you've stretched your arms as far back as they can go, begin exhaling strongly through your nose. Bring your arms slowly back to the original position. Again, press your palms together, keeping your arms parallel to the ground the entire time. Silently say to yourself with each expansion as you open your arms up, I open myself fully to give and receive love. Yeah, you can say it in your heart, you can say it in your mind, or you can say it out loud, whichever fits you. You are able to repeat this movement 26 times with your eyes closed and slightly rolled up and focus just above between the eyebrows, your third eye. Now, just as a slight little hint, when your eyes are rolled up and focused just above you, it does put you into the trance state, okay? Which means that you are then talking to your unconscious mind, which is what we know controls everything. So when you say that, you're basically instructing your unconscious mind to be open, to give and receive love, okay? You do this exercise at a moderate pace. Allow yourself to relax between expansions. If necessary, you might bring your arms down to rest upon your knees. All right, so let's try doing that. We'll do that 26 times. Hold on, let me just get into that position. Not as easy on this rocking chair, but I can do it. Or Okay, start like this. Open up. I open myself up to give and receive love. I'll just close the this. This probably don't need to actually be videoing. Okay, how is that for you? Good. Really sore now. <laughs> Me too. It's a good workout for your arms. <laughs> <laughs> but it does open you up. It does make you feel more expansive and more open to what can come in. Okay. The bonus of the year is throughout the day, whenever you think of it, breathe deeply into your heart, repeating silent to yourself, I open myself fully to give and receive love. Just throughout your day, throughout your week. Okay, in this case, it's going to be throughout your week. Now, over here, she basically gives, how do you say, seven assignments a week, one assignment a day. We're not actually meeting every day of the week. So let's just see over here if there's anything else here that we can do for next time. Close off again for a second. Okay, she basically is telling us here to begin our day with a type of a meditation. All right, so let's read through the meditation and then do it as best you can for memory throughout the week. Okay, so I'm going to read through it over here. Um, I recommend that you don't try to meditate lying down as it is too easy to fall asleep, particularly first thing in the morning. If you can sit up straight and cross your legs in front of you, rest your hands gently on your thighs and close your eyes. Note for some of you, sitting still like this presents an immense challenge. If this is true for you, I'd rather you try a walking meditation than skip the meditation included in this book entirely. Take a mindful walk around the block while doing the signed meditation as best you can. Notice if there's any tension in your body. If so, release it and allow yourself to feel relaxed. Focus on your breathing, allowing your breath to fill up your belly and then your heart. Imagine a beautiful light expanding the energy around your heart with each breath. Next thing, think of your neighbors. Notice that there's vibrant energy that connects your heart to their heart and back again from them to you. Say to yourself, I'm connected to everyone and everything. Now think of your coworkers or those you come in contact with on a daily basis. Again, notice the beautiful force fields of energy connect you with each person you see. Whether you know the person by name or not, repeat the phrase to yourself with each person you think of. Now imagine that you're walking down a street. Again, 
see energy connecting you to everyone you pass. And continue to repeat the phrase, I'm connected to everyone and everything. Now think of those people who you are estranged from. Maybe it's because there's unresolved anger between you. Perhaps it's because time has passed and you've lost touch. Whoever comes to mind is fine. And as you repeat the phrase with each person who comes to mind, imagine a beautiful energy passing between your heart and theirs, connecting you in love. Spend at least three minutes doing this exercise. If you are able to sit for a longer period, I encourage you to do so, but you need not do it for longer than for three minutes. And I invite you to frequently throughout your day, connect with your own heart and repeat silently to yourself, I am connected to everyone and to everything. Consciously relate to those around you, looking to discover the connection between yourself and others. Make eye contact. Speak to someone you would ordinarily not speak to. Smile at someone you might normally look away from. Ask someone how they are and pause long enough to listen to their response. Note if any of this makes you uncomfortable and just breathe through your discomfort. Don't allow your discomfort to stop you from doing the exercise throughout the day. At the end of the day, take out your journal and write down the moments where you experienced a sense of connection, relatedness, and belonging that passed between you and another person, whether or not you knew them. It could be that a stranger looked at you and smiled. Perhaps you opened the door for an elderly person or someone called you for business purposes. Remember, we are trying to look for love everywhere. Okay, so that's one of our assignments as well. Aside from saying I open myself up to give and receive love, we're also looking at people, feeling connected to them, and then writing down how we feel about it, what happened to us. Okay, let's see if there's another one over here that's worthwhile doing. I mean, they're all worthwhile doing, but our particular purpose. Okay, yes, this is a good one. Okay, in your journal, Write a list of five things or more that you need in order to be happy in a relationship. Okay, this I advise you to write down because we'll discuss it next week just to see what things you came up with and how they felt. Okay, so this might look like something like, I need to feel valued and respected. I need to be told that I am beautiful. I need to be inspired. Okay. Now close your eyes after you write it, and one statement at a time, grant yourself each item on your list by speaking it to yourself silently or out loud. So that I need to be valued and respected becomes, I value and respect myself. I need to be told that I am beautiful becomes, I acknowledge how beautiful I am. I need to be inspired means I inspire myself constantly. Now we know that unless we give it to ourselves, unless we feel it from the inside, no matter how much someone from the outside is gonna tell it to us, we won't be able to accept it. So if you've ever heard the term, become the person that you want to meet, this is what it's about, becoming the person that you wanna meet. Do it for yourself, because if you don't do it for yourself, you won't be able to accept it for, uh, from others. And if you do do it from yourself, for yourself, you won't attract the others who don't do it. Okay, because it's what you're holding inside of you. Any questions about that? Okay. Now, a bonus practice and action over here is to get some quiet time today where you can privately write a letter to yourself written to you from your ideal lover. Imagine what he might say to you as he whispers softly in your ear in a moment of great tenderness and love. What is it that your heart has longed to hear your lover say to you? For example, you are the most beautiful woman I have ever known. I will always love you and I will always do everything in my power to make you happy. When you're finished, reread your letter again and allow yourself to imagine those words being spoken to you with the greatest, kindest care. 
Now place your hand upon your heart. Silently or aloud, lovingly say your name to yourself, slowly, with great meaning. Read your letter to yourself from yourself. Allow your heart to open and receive the sweet sentiments that you have written. This goes back to the idea of, I open myself up to give and receive love. Giving and receiving love is not only from somebody else, it's from ourselves to ourselves. Because if we don't allow ourselves to love ourselves, no one will be able to love us. Okay, let's look at the next one. Um, that we're not going to do right now. That's the number five. Okay, this is also a good one. Okay, take your journal. Write a list of your goals, all the things you feel important for you to accomplish in this lifetime. Okay. Begin a collage today that you can work on at your own pace throughout the course. If you wish to spend the day doing this project to complete it, that's great. However, if the most you can do today is simply begin the collage by locating one picture or phrase that you want to include, that's also fine. Now, if you live on your own and aren't afraid of other people seeing this and making fun of you, make a big board of a collage. I personally have six children. Now them are living at home, but some of them are, and they walk to room all the time. I prefer doing it inside the notebook. And even if it takes a few pages, does it matter? I set aside a few pages for this. And then I glue the things in, and it's my personal thing. And I can look through it anytime that I want, and I can close it and put it away anytime that I want. So it gives me the power over it. Okay, now what you're supposed to do is you look for images and words that represent the fulfillment and love in your life. Make sure that you include images of all the various parts of yourself and your life that are important to you, including those needs that you identified, right, that we haven't identified yet, so we're gonna skip that. It's important you create a portrait of your life in which romantic love coexists with all the other things that you love and need in your life in order to be fulfilled because Face it, even though there are some people who are happy just sitting at home and loving their, their partner and doing everything for their partner, that's not really a complete person. You want to have life in and of yourself because otherwise you're dependent on your partner to fulfill you. And that's not a good place to be. Some men might want that, but they don't really want that. Okay? They, most people in today's world want an equal relationship. You have to put inside your board, right? This is something that happened to do with the vision board. Every part in your life that you want to fulfill, not just the love part. So if you want to go, you know, travel to China, put that in there. If you want to, you know, build a big skyscraper, put that in there. And this, by the way, is for both men and women. It's not just for women. Do it in either, either direction, but make sure you contain all the things that fulfill you in your life. Okay, she has a bonus practice and action over here. Write about your quest for love by turning your life and all you've been through into your own personalized fairy tale. Allow yourself to write about your life as though you were standing outside yourself. Be creative, expressing your setbacks and failures as the obstacles you need to overcome. See the people in your life, yourself included, as mythological characters. See parts of yourself in all of your main archetypal characters. The damsel in distress who longs for someone to rescue her. The knight in shining armor who heroically goes to many lengths to save her from the sorrows. And the critical, tyrannical parent who would have, who would have her settle for less than her ideal love. Write about the challenges you are facing as the dragons that need to be slayed before love can be really realized. Begin your fairy tale with a once upon a time and end it with happy ending where love and all the important goals of your life are abundantly filled. Okay, I think that's going to be enough for this time. If you don't get to it all, that's fine. We'll just get to it next week. 
Okay, any questions? Got it written down, so. Okay, I see you have your notebook too, your journal, that's good. And so next week we'll, if you wanna share anything, that will be fine. I'll share whatever I have to share. We'll turn off the video for that so that um, those are personal stuff. And the part where we get what we got out of it, that will probably video so that people can see how good this is and how much they're getting out of it and they'll wanna join us. And as I said, the more people work together, the more powerful the work. So my aim is to get as many people as possible working on this together. And that we all find the love that we're looking for at the end of the day. Join us next week, same time, same place. Don't forget, if you like this video, leave a like down below, subscribe to my channel or subscribe to my newsletter. The address is right down below over there. Have a great week.